Just a small introduction before we begin this mass. This is being streamed live from St. Gerald's Monastery in Wellington, New Zealand, which is at the moment our home, our safe space. So we live here. This is a self-contained place. So we are praying even uh, daily, just as we live our lives. And we are streaming this mass to extend to all those who may be viewing God's consolation. It is a consolation for us to be able to celebrate Mass every day, and we extend this consolation to you too, so that God may strengthen you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. If the Son sets you free, then you are free indeed. This is such a consoling thought, knowing that, as we sing in the worship song, I know that I am a child of God, in the Father's house there is a place for me. So yes, let us take that place. Let us occupy that space. Let us claim that, yes, there is a place for me, that no one is left out. Jesus continues today to speak about being saved, being freed, so let us ask that God will free us, even from hidden wounds. Let us pray that even wounds that we are still carrying may become holy wounds, that they will not be a curse, but a blessing, drawing upon us God's love and mercy. Let us ask forgiveness. <coughs> Lord, have mercy. <coughs> Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We are offering this Mass for my Aunt Isabella, today being the second anniversary of her demise. We are also praying for healing for Felino and Angeles, who are at the moment in hospital in the UK with COVID-19. Let us also pray for all those who are on the front line, people who are suffering, the elderly who may be alone in these moments, and all other people who are struggling as an effect of this worldwide pandemic. Let us spend a moment in silence, putting in our personal intentions. Pardon the offenses of your people, we pray, O Lord, and in your goodness set us free from the bonds of the sins we have committed in our weakness. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar addressed them, Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego. Is it true that you do not serve my gods and that you refuse to worship the golden statue I have erected? When you hear the sound of horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, or any other instrument, are you prepared to prostrate yourselves and worship the statue I have made? If you refuse to worship it, you must be, you must be thrown straight away into the burning fiery furnace. And where is the God who could save you 
from my power. Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego replied to the king Nebuchadnezzar, your question hardly requires any answer. If our God, the one we serve, is able to save us from the burning fiery furnace and from your power, O King, He will save us. And even He, and even if He does not, then you must know, O King, that we will not serve your God or worship the statue you have erected. These words infuriated King Nebuchadnezzar. His expression was very different now as he looked at Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego. He gave orders for the furnace to be made seven times hotter than usual and commanded certain stalwarts from his army to bind Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego and throw them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sprang to his feet in amazement. He said to his advisors, Did we not have these three men thrown bound into the fire? They replied, Certainly, O king. But he went on, I can see four men walking about freely in the heart of the fire without coming to any harm. And the four looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Blessed be the God of Sedrach, Mesach, and Abednego. He has sent his angel to rescue his servants, who putting their trust in him, defied the order of the king and preferred to forfeit their bodies rather than serve or worship any god but their own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. You are blessed, Lord God of our fathers. To you glory and praise forevermore. Bless your glorious holy name. To you glory and praise forevermore. Glory and praise forever. You are blessed in the temple of your glory. To you glory and praise forevermore. Glory and praise forever. You are blessed on the throne of your kingdom. To you, glory and praise forevermore. Glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed who gaze into the depths. To you, glory and praise forevermore. Glory and praise forever. You are blessed in the firmament of heaven. To you, glory and praise forevermore. Glory and praise forevermore. Let us stand. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give back to me the joy of your salvation. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. To the Jews who believed in him, Jesus said, If you make my word your home, you will indeed be my disciples. You will learn the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered, We are descended from Abraham. We have never been the slaves of anyone. What do you mean, you will be made free? Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, everyone who commits sin is a slave. Now the slave's place in the house is not as sure, 
but the sun's place is assured. So if the sun makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descended from Abraham, but in spite of that, you want to kill me, because nothing I say has penetrated into you. What for my part I speak of is what I have seen with my father, but you, you put into action the lessons learned from your father. They insisted, our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do as Abraham did. As it is, you want to kill me when I tell you the truth, as I have learned it from God. That is not what Abraham did. What you are doing is what your father does. We were not born of prostitution, they went on. We have one father, God. Jesus answered them, if God were your father, you would love me, since I have come here from God. Yes, I have come from him. Not that I came because I chose. No, I was sent, and by him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today, the readings basically are a lot about freedom, and we know that there are two kinds of freedom. We can be free from something, and we can also be free for something. As when someone is released, and that person feels so light, that he wants to hug everybody, maybe they disregard the coronavirus regulations, let's don't do that. But you know the feeling, freedom from, and that is what the Jews had in mind. But Jesus showed them that even there, they were not getting things right, because they were still bound by unbelief, which for John is the greatest sin. The greatest sin is that one cannot believe, and they don't want to come to me, Jesus is telling them. And you flip to scripture, seeking everywhere, but you don't come to me. So that is too a sin. They lack this faith in him as their savior. Sometimes we can also think of freedom as being a freedom for, as the gospel ends. I came not because I chose, but because I was sent by him. This freedom then, the inner freedom which makes us available to give ourselves. The first reading also reminded me of what we will be considering even in today and tomorrow in the sharing groups, the virtuous life, that we do the right thing with joy, promptly, consistently. So that is what those three young men are doing, even in the face or in the heat of that burning fairness. And it is so good, know that they are such free persons. Uh, even if he does not save us, then you must know, O King, that we will not serve your God, even if our God does not save us. Even that is a freedom, a freedom for. Because sometimes our freedoms, we think that we are free, but then we are putting so many conditions, even on God, even on others. Even as we heard in that video, sometimes we make uh, these conditions even on the people we love, such that we become unbearable to them we become a burden that others cannot carry. So we have so many aspects of freedom. Sometimes we think of freedom even as letting go. And that is scary. We do not like to let go of things. Even as this, uh, these weeks uh, progress, sometimes we realize we have had to let go of so many things. Things we enjoy, friendships, going out, going to the movies, to the gym maybe, or swimming. So many things we have had to let, let go. And then there is that sort of emptiness. And then we ask ourselves and we lament, God, where are you? What kind of life is this? And while preparing today, two other scriptures came to mind. The first was that of the rich young man. Even that man, Jesus was asking him to let go of something. But we know that before he did that, Jesus looked at him and loved him. So yes, Jesus' love is setting that young man free. 
He was not empty-handed. He was not going away losing something, but he was gaining something. He was gaining Christ's love. And the other instance is that woman who was anointing Christ's feet with the ointment. And then Jesus addressed the Pharisees, I mean, see this woman, and then he ends. She has been forgiven much, as her deeds testify. But he who has been forgiven little will love little. So yes, let us not hide ourselves, even when sometimes in these moments, certain wounds maybe are exposed and we feel vulnerable. We feel that sometimes we are moving backwards instead of forward, that we experience so much lack of inner freedom and sometimes even the constraint that we are forced to live in. Let us not hide. Let us not hide in the ground. But let us expose ourselves to Christ, who came here to heal us, who comes, who is not in the past or in the future, but in the present moment, that he wants to give us this great joy, so that even things that are heavy, but necessary for us to grow, to become mature, and to become free, we will do willingly, and promptly, and consistently, and with joy. Let us today pray for this grace for ourselves, and for all many other people who seek this maturity and freedom. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us stand. Lord, we thank you that you gaze into the depths of our souls and hearts, you who can fathom the mystery that is in our hearts, you who can give direction even in times of confusion by reminding us of the priority to love with all our minds and heart and strength. Lord, we ask for this grace today that whatever we do, we do for you. You have set us free, and whatever we do, we do lovingly. Let us offer up our prayers. for those who are still at work, not only in essential services, but also those working in pharmacies and supermarkets and in the transportation and postage systems. 
in a way they are too taking risks, Lord, but they have to ensure that life is going on, even those in the civil service. Lord, we ask that you protect them and their families and give them the joy to continue serving, be it what is essential for life, even in these times. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for blessing us with whatever is necessary for our growth and maturity. Continue sending your spirit upon us during this day to make us holy and consistent in love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness, who have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness, who have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, may the mysteries we have received bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children this sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts so that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold on rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with the angels and saints in heaven, here on earth we give you praise, as without them we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and then turned willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially today my Aunt Isabella, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Saint Gerard, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my own peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, to your death gave life to the world, free us by this most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commands and never let us be parted from you. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my feet. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we say the prayer of spiritual communion, let us today ask the Lord to give us the desire to be really free, to be set free, not by anything or anyone in this world, but by the Son of God, the only one who can really set us free. Let us ask for the desire that we realize that we have to be set free. And even in the process, any wounds that appear we ask the Lord to bless them so that they become holy ones, leading to gain, not to loss. Let us say together, Jesus, my Lord, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. At this moment, I cannot receive you sacramentally. Come, nevertheless and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, make it like your own. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself totally to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Have mercy, Lord, on your church as she brings you her supplications. Be attentive to those who incline their hearts before you. Do not allow, we pray, those you have redeemed by the death of your only begotten Son to be harmed by their sins or weighed down by their trials. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. We are saying Christ against the wickedness and the spirits of the devil. We are for the future of the world. And do not lose our time. I am the Lord of the Lord. I am the Lord of the Lord. I am the Lord of the Lord. I am the Lord of the Lord.